Hello and welcome to part four of the creating the earth in Eevee. I'm sorry for such a long delay and it's been a long time coming but I hope that this makes up for it. During this stage of our build we're going to be more focusing on sprucing things up a little bit and making the scene look really good. So the first thing is I'm going to create a satellite to put in the scene so I'm going to open up a new executable of Blender 2.8 and get started. During the modeling stage, I'm only really going to be using a couple of tools. I'm going to be using Shift A to add a new object. I'm going to be using E to extrude, S to scale, and R to rotate. Really, these are your main tools that you should be using when modeling. There are a lot more advanced tools that you can use, and by all means, if you're comfortable with them, use them because they can make modeling a whole lot easier. But if you're just starting out modeling and uh, you're not really that into it that yet. Just use those main tools and you should be fine in creating a, a fairly good piece. Oh, and don't, uh, I shouldn't forget X, X for delete. Um, so really, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be manipulating faces and vertices mostly. And you're going to be using E, S, R, and X, as well as Shift A to add in primitives. In terms of the materials that we're going to be creating, it's going to be very simple. I'm just using some glossy shaders uh, uh, for the uh, actual panels, as well as a few metallic shaders for the body itself, as well as a very diffuse shader for the actual structure. So this is by no means a tutorial on materials. So that's why I'm keeping it so simple. The main thing that I really want to teach you in regards to materials is the light. So the emission shader that I've put on the end of the satellite. And we're going to make that a cyclical animation. So we're going to apply a cyclical animation to the value of the emission so it looks like it's flashing. After I've done all that I create an empty and I just apply all the objects to that empty so that I just have to manipulate the empty to animate the whole thing. So it's a very quick and easy way to provide a control point that so you don't have to select all your objects. To create the cyclical light, I'm first going to go to my animation tab and then I'm going to change uh, this window here so that it is showing my materials. I'm then going to make sure that I've selected the object with the right material on it. And as you can see, I have my emission material. I'm just going to hover over that value and press I. So you, as you can see, a keyframe pops up. And I'm going to create another one at uh, an arbitrary value. Next, I'm just going to go into my curves uh, window here. I'm going to set it to linear by pressing T. And now I can uh, go into the modifiers tab, create a cycles modifier, and then depending on what type of uh, pulsation you want, you can either leave it as is. So this is very much uh, reminiscent of a building pulsation that you'll see in high rise buildings. Or alternatively, you can add in a uh, another keyframe and just change the values a little bit. So you can add three keyframes to make it a more cyclical uh, but I, I, I think I stick with a pulsation such as this. this is more of like a sawtooth pulse. Um, and I think it looks pretty good. Uh, very simple to set up, not too much uh, playing around. And yeah, you have a pulsating light in Blender now. So I'm just gonna save that object out and go back into my earth file. In my earth file, I'm going to copy and paste my satellite that I've created and using my empty control point, I'm just going to scale it down to an arbitrary value again. Uh, it really doesn't matter what size it is. It does not have to be life size, I can assure you. Our jobs are merely to make the illusion of reality, not be reality itself. So as long as it looks fine, that's all you really have to worry about. So don't go overboard with 
uh, values of sizes and things like that. The Earth does not have to be 31,000 or however large it is kilometers. Uh, and your satellite doesn't have to be a few meters. It can be pretty large. It just really depends on uh, the type of shot you're going for. The next stage is all about framing. Here you can rotate the object to your heart's content just so that you're getting a good compositional value. You can play around with this for as long as you like. You've got your main pieces of elements already created. So this is merely more about making the final picture look good. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make it easier for us to manipulate our Earth. So I'm going to create another cube empty and then I'm going to link all of our objects that we've created that are a part of the Earth. So I'm going to press X and then uh, finally select our empty as the last one and parent everything together. And now all that we'll have to do to manipulate our Earth is really just rotate the empty or move the empty in space. So this is just a much easier way to uh, manipulate all of our objects at the same time. So it's a similar method that we're using. Well, it's actually the same method um, as the satellite. So yeah, this is just a very quick and hacky way of really being able to manipulate the Earth so that we can position it to where we want. The next thing that I'm going to uh, want to do to kind of give the feeling that our planet is rotating through space is I'm going to create a rotational keyframe on our sun light value. Uh, so I'm just going to select the sun, press I, and then set a rotation keyframe at the beginning of the scene. After that, I'm then going to go to my end frame, uh, whatever frame that may be in your project. And I'm also going to set a new rotation keyframe after I have manipulated the rotation of the light. So what this is going to do is it's going to create an illusion of our Earth uh, rotating in space. So we're not actually going to rotate the Earth per se. We are eventually, but we're only going to rotate it minusculely. Uh, this is just going to add a really nice effect. So it's going to feel like our camera is also moving through space, even though it's actually not moving at all. So uh, I, this is highlighting one of the many uh, techniques of animation and filmmaking in general, and it's all an illusion. You always have to be aware that it's all an illusion. You, you really don't want to go into, especially um, feature film or uh, films in general, um, with a mindset that everything has to be correct size, everything has to be 100% accurate to the real world, it doesn't. It just has to be reminiscent to the real world and make us, the viewers, believe that it is real. Our next step is that we're going to create a parallax effect between the satellite and the Earth itself. So the satellite's going to rush past our camera, so it looks like it's going to be uh, much further from the Earth and much closer to our camera than it actually is. So to do that, we're going to create a curve because we're going to essentially animate our satellite along a curve. So this is a bit more of an advanced uh, animation technique, but it is also a very useful one. So with my empty selected, I'm going to set my cursor to the empty. Uh, if you'd like to know how to do that, I have a video which will be in the link in the description as well as in the top right hand corner. The next step is I'm going to essentially um, set the beginning point of my path to the origin of my satellite. To do this, I'm going to delete all but two of the points of my path. Then I'm going to set the end point to the origin of my satellite via Control shift s and then I'm going to grab the second point and set that as the end point of the path's animation. I'm then going to select both those points and then subdivide and then just create a bit of a sort of bend within the path itself. 
Now, as you may notice, there's a problem with the curve and you can see that it's quite sharp in the corners. Uh, to get rid of that, I'm just going to go to my curve and hit Bezier. And as you notice, after I uncheck that or check that, then uncheck it again, it's going to uh, correct that problem. Don't know why that happened. Uh, why that is happening or if it is in the more uh, modern versions of Blender. This uh, was filmed quite a while ago still during the beta so some of the things and some of the errors that you may be seeing uh, may not occur within your version so just be aware of that. Now with my satellite empty selected I'm going to navigate to the constraints tab menu and I'm going to apply a a path constraint. Next I'm going to use the pick picker object tool and select my curve as you'll see straight away our satellite gets thrown across the the world. Uh, an easy way to fix this is I'm just going to snap that back to the origin um, because our origin's already set to where it is. After that I'm going to check the fixed position um, checkbox and what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to drag the offset um, uh, value and use that to animate the satellite along the path. So the offset is essentially how far along the path the satellite is progressing. So we're just going to be animating that offset value to animate the satellite as a whole. So this is a very useful technique. I use it all the time for spaceships as well as other things such as cameras as well as uh, particle systems incredibly useful and you have much more fine control over the actual timing of the animation itself thank you so much for watching this video i hope that it's helped you realize your dreams of creating the earth in blender 2.8 uh, i know that the atmospheric shade is quite a useful technique and i hope that you're able to apply it to your own projects if this video has helped you in any way, please be sure to give it a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. This is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com, signing off.